Well, so great to be here. I'd like to acknowledge the traditional custodians of the land I'm presenting from today, the Bundjalung people in northern New South Wales, and I pay my respects to their elders past and present. Well, thanks for joining me. I'm Cameron Dale. I'm a practicing artist and a PhD candidate from the University of Melbourne. The Zoom background I have here is my home uh, campus in South Bank, Melbourne. I live across the street, actually, but uh, today I join you from Lennox Heads in northern New South Wales, where I'm enjoying my family holiday. Uh, today I want to speak to you about the concept of the augmented guitarist and how it relates to my own journey and my livelihood. And I, I want to underline livelihood. That's a key point that I'm going to be touching on again and again in my presentation my livelihood as an artist during the COVID-19 pandemic and how the toolkit I built in response to the unusual circumstances of the past two years has created lasting value and relevance for my future practice. First, let me tell you a little bit about myself. This is me. I'm Cameron Dale. I've had the good fortune to make my living playing the guitar. For more than 20 years, I've lived and worked around the world, making music, composing, recording, and performing. In March 2020, I was one of the many artists across Australia whose diaries went from full to empty in the space of an afternoon. The uh, lockdowns and restrictions resulting from COVID-19 made it harder than ever to be a practicing artist, particularly one whose main income was derived from performance. What happened next was unexpected. A nearly immediate move to all online and remote work, including all forms of creative collaboration. It meant I could work from work at home in lockdown in Melbourne while with my collaborators in, in my city, in other states, and even overseas. Rather than being a setback, I found that I already had a toolkit at my disposal for this new kind of collaboration from my many years as a performer, composer, and producer, and a recording artist. I just needed to integrate all of these modes of working and creating. So what does being an augmented guitarist mean exactly? Well, here's another picture of me. <laughs> this is me playing one of the handful of gigs I got to play in 2021. And I'm surrounded by my toolkit here. This gig was at Phoenix Central Park in Sydney, and I was performing with the avant punk group Liars. We were presenting a new work that we completed during the lockdown and we finally got a chance to uh, film a performance in front of a live audience. So we took that opportunity. What I'd love to do if everyone's up for it is I'd love to give everyone a quick blast of this. So I'm gonna play some music. Give me a thumbs up if you can hear it okay. Here we go, let's go back to Sydney in uh, June. Let's see if this works. How about now? Yay. Thank you. So here's that photo again. Surrounding me is everything I need to make all the sounds I make. It's about four square meters of space. This toolkit for creative collaboration works everywhere, regardless of whether I was performing live on stage, like I just showed you, with a band, or in the studio composing a score for contemporary dance. Inside this four square meters are the tools that are familiar to three key thinkers in contemporary music practice. Let me break that down for you. To my left is an electric guitar and two amplifiers. This setup 
is something that would be familiar to the Beatles and countless rock bands ever since. We have my electric guitar, a guitar amp, a bass amp. Now in 2021, as a practicing modern electric guitarist, I see firsthand how the instrument is indeed a cultural artifact, an icon of the rock and roll explosion of the mid to late 20th century. And this is straight from the first of our three thinkers, Kevin Dorr. Dorr first coined the term the new guitarscape to describe the way in which guitars are used and what that means in terms of cultural practice and critical theory. This now opens up an exciting new discussion, which I find resonates with my own practice. Now let's look in front of me. It's useful to think of the electric guitar as, as a self-contained ecosystem. Uh, let's take a look at the instrument. It's an instrument that has a neck, a strings, uh, pickups, and can be include effects units, amplification. We can consider it a modular instrument. Each performer can then customize this modular instrument as an ecosystem to suit their needs. Here I have a couple of analog effects pedals. Uh, this would be familiar to guitarists from the 1970s, 1980s. I also have some effects pedals with uh, digital microchips. This is 1980s technology and, and the, the pedal board in front of me would be something a, a practitioner from the 1990s would definitely recognize. The electric guitar is now an interchangeable augmented instrument. The Finnish guitarist and academic Otto Ladoja came up with this wonderful phrase. And I'd like to take that idea further. Now let's have a look to my right hand side. Here we can see a MacBook uh, running Ableton Live software with an audio interface. We also see some monitor ear pieces that I'm wearing in my ears, in-ear monitors. This is a mobile recording studio. Brian Eno first suggested that the recording studio is a musical instrument. He would walk into the studio without any preconceived or notated idea and begin composing with sound as raw material, like, like sonic painting. When he made those remarks in 1979, the studio he was referring to was a dark and dusty room with a tape machine, an analog mixing console and countless other gadgets. He couldn't have imagined this modern day powerful and portable recording studio environment. The studio is now center stage. My research takes Eno's idea and situates the augmented guitarist right in the middle of this activated recording studio environment. I also have a MIDI keyboard here and MIDI trigger pads on the floor so I can play samples with my feet. I'm literally performing the recording software. Much of studio technology is guitar centric. Audio, audio signal processing hardware effects boxes are often referred to simply as guitar pedals. As a performer, composer, producer in the recording studio, I find the guitar sits naturally in this space. It's, it's on my knee as I work with my collaborators. The guitar doesn't mask my face or create any physical barrier. It, it, it becomes invisible. Okay, we've now covered my whole setup. It's a four square meter sonic ecosystem within which I can create a universe of sounds. Ten minutes. But what's missing? What haven't we covered here? the artist, the protagonist, and I would contend the augmented guitarist. Acknowledging Brian Eno's concept of the studio as a compositional tool, my creative practices research looks beyond to situate the augmented guitarist in the role of performer, composer, and producer. It, it sounds te technical, so it's useful to share my experience from earlier this year. I used the same workflow to compose, perform, and record a contemporary dance work with the amazing team at Dance North. This is a wonderful collaboration with Dance North and First Nations artists called Dangari Nyanyanyari Binya as part of the North Australian Festival of Art NAFA. While work began in Townsville, uh, I was deep in another Melbourne lockdown, but I could use the toolkit of the augmented guitarist from my own studio, I was could uh, engage on Zoom like we are now, but I would also broadcast my studio through Audio Movers software to facilitate a real-time collaboration. The really important point here is about livelihood. It's the theme of this symposium. Using this research, I was able to continue to work through the Melbourne lockdowns while all the performance venues around me were shut. And so a really beautiful large-scale outdoor dance work performance took season, took, season took place in Queensland. I needed to fully engage all aspects of my creative practice. And I do so by zooming out. The augmented guitar practice lets me work in three different ways. I'm a composer, producer, a performing guitarist, and a collaborator. 
My guitar performance practice has been more than just a mode for the delivery of musical output. It has been a meta creative instrument, a hyper tool, if you will, that has mediated the scope and scale of my artistic reach. Well, I hope I've demonstrated a sustainable professional model for a modern music maker. By combining my practice in contemporary electric guitar with modern recording studio techniques, I can take that wonderful idea of the recording studio as a musical instrument and bring it into the 21st century. Finally, I encourage all my peers to keep an open mind. Performers are too often skeptical at integrating these modern studio techniques into their performance practice. And likewise, contemporary digital record producers would benefit from further developing their own instrumental abilities. It's all the same ecosystem. If you take nothing else from this, my, my presentation, then please take this. I'm excited by these new ways I'm making music. I'm working with my collaborators in entirely new situations, using techniques that will remain useful in my creative practice as we move forward in these post-normal times. <laughs> Thanks very much. Uh, I'm happy. Uh, I'm very happy to be here, and I'm happy to take any questions. Cameron, thank you so much. It's wonderful to see you. see you so energized. There's a real light in your eyes as you talk about the augmented artist. I have to say, I, in the last couple of years, I've uh, felt like the augmented academic, and I don't know if I've, I've managed quite the same sparkle. Does anyone have any questions for Cameron? Yep, we've got uh, Kirsten and Diana. Diana, should we go to you first, and then we'll go to Kirsten? Oh, Diana, you're on mute. Okay, there we go. Thanks, Cameron. <clears throat> Very interesting. Now, you, you might have done this and I wasn't clear, but have you played collaboratively with musicians? I know you've collaborated with dancers online, but have you played collaboratively online with musicians? Because I've just reviewed a, a paper, which I'll try and remain anonymous about and all, um, which was a big group of, impro of, of um, improvisers and they're using latency and the surging of Zoom and and all that, that was that was part of their thing. And I just, they used that as part of their creative sound world. And I wondered if you had explored that. Fan, fantastic <laughs> question, Dana, thank you. Thank you for that. You touch on the key point is latency. It's physical, we can't, we can't get past physical distance. Uh, even the internet can only get a, close to the speed of light. So we're always gonna have that issue of latency. And there's a wonderful uh, improvising ensemble down here in Melbourne that had really came up with some useful, models and, uh, and examples of how to move forward in this space. There's also, I wish I could name the piece of software. There's a wonderful Australian singer, Kristen Barati, who's been collaborating with a piece of software. If anyone here knows, can remember the name of the software, but they have been able to get the latency down to 300 milliseconds, maybe 500 milliseconds at the most, which is still half a second. It's, it's not, we'll never be able to play tight uh, rhythmically. Obviously with music as, uh, to gesture and dance, uh, I have an unfair advantage that I you know, don't have to be quite that tight. But yeah, fair, fair point, Diana. Uh, we're, we're a while away from being able to rehearse uh, that tight. But, but, but there, there are green shoots here. This is a space to watch. Yeah, the, the group that I'm talking about were actually, free, they were doing free improvisation, so they, they were not necessarily trying to necessarily play in time. But yeah, good luck with your playing. Terrific. Kirsten, over to you. Hi, Cameron. Um, thank you very much for the presentation. It was really fantastic, and congratulations as well to um, like being able to do this in the midst of a pandemic. I think it's really awesome. Um, I'm just kind of curious about what the time frame was for you. So you said you had a, like all your bookings for live performances were cancelled, and then you've managed to do this um, like all this online work, which is fantastic. Um, but you know, was it a really quick turnaround or, or did it take you a long time to come to that? Yeah, thanks. Thanks, Kirsten. It's, it's useful. I should have um, articulated this. It wasn't so much that I found new work. It was I was able to take my existing practice and find new ways to express it. Uh, so, for instance, the album with Liars, we were halfway through making that when lockdown happened, but we quickly pivoted to an online model and we got that little window of opportunity to get it sneak in a couple of performances. Uh, and so we filmed it like I, so I can share it with you to, today. Uh, similarly, with the commissions for Dance North, I had two dance works uh, commissioned last this year. 
and uh, I was supposed to be there rehearsing with the dancers. In fact, with contemporary dance, we often, as mus as composers for contemporary dance, we spend time in in the space, in the floor, breathing the same air. And, and for me, the guitar again has an advantage that I can. It, it, it's it's an instrument of gesture. I can move. I can interact. So I didn't get that experience. But that remote experience that I articulated in my presentation. I was able to make some form of that. I was able to watch, and even though there was that latency that Diana mentioned earlier. Uh, so, I answer to your question, it was existing work that I pivoted across. Um, but, but it does show new ways that I can pursue new work now. Thank you. Fabulous. Any other questions? Oh, hi. Tina here. Um, I just wondered whether the software that you were thinking of is Jam Kazan, the one that Kristen Morati might be using. Um, yeah, I'm not sure. That name doesn't sound familiar to me, but it was, I would blame my memory. Uh, you may well yeah. be correct. But yeah, definitely Kristen and on her social media, she's, she's posted some recent interviews with the founder, who's a New York jazz pianist. Again, I forget. Uh, I'm sorry, I don't have Fabulous. the answer. That's, that's all good. I know where to go to find out more. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks. Fantastic. Any other questions? I've got a question. Cameron, when you're in those different spaces, do you feel like the creativity and the ideas are flowing from the same place within you? Or is it, are you kind of wearing different hats, but you like them all? Or are there any things that you don't like in any of those in that augmented guitarist space? That's an interesting question. I, I, I haven't paused to think about that. I, I do. So I guess the answer must be, surely it must be coming from the same space. Uh, and maybe it's not so different between being a performing musician live on stage and a recording musician. Uh, similarly, it's, I wouldn't say it's like you're changing creative headspaces. You're just mm -hmm. in, finding yourself in a new environment. And uh, mm -hmm. the, 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 the other point related to that is as recording artist uh, with who incorporates a, a studio is part of their performance rig. Uh, so much of my work actually is people just calling and asking for me to record very quickly. They might have a project that's up in the air and they're saying, can you record guitar this afternoon? We need it tonight. And so especially with work I might be doing overseas. Uh, so by having that ecosystem already built, I can quickly generate and, and interact with professional opportunities that I couldn't travel to. I couldn't mm. be there in that same amount of time. 